Brendan obviously did Future Track Diaries recently, or just the other day, obviously, with um, Lauren Janko. Um, Laura Janko, sorry, not Lauren, Laura Janko. And it's a pretty good one from what I've seen because she's really bubbly. She's really fun. She's a fucking beast in terms of UFC, in terms of interviewing and commentating and stuff, which is interesting as well because I, I, I was wondering when I was watching her, you know, do some interviews with fires and stuff and be color commentary, just be like a good little presence around there because I think she's way better than Megan Olivia, personally for me. I think she just, just has a bit more spunk, a bit more spirit, a bit more zazazim about her. But I was thinking as well, is it just because she's like a pretty woman and she's just open eyed and face and stuff. And she kind of invites people in, in terms of like her face and her presence. She's very kind of warm. You can tell, um, maybe it's the kind of mum energy she's got. I wonder if that kind of helps a lot with these sort of interviews with, you know, that kind of person working in an environment at the UFC where you're like surrounded by like killers, right? You're surrounded by all these like big birdie guys and stuff. Maybe they do need to kind of be, be made to feel a little bit, Oh, like you're like you're at home, like it's a familiar face. That like she could be like a friend's mum, a friend's sister. Do you know what I mean? Like somebody you've kind of seen before, maybe somebody you worked with in the past, maybe a girl you went to high school. I mean, this. I wonder if that kind of plays into it. If you're a presenter, does that kind of play into it? Like when you're in that kind of sport, am I kind of thinking, or am I being, or am I being gay and clearly showing that I was maybe wanking under a table or something? I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm, I'm thinking too much about it. <laughs> but anyway, she's really good at it. She's really good. Oh yeah, and also she she fought too. So I guess that kind of helps because she's obviously been there. She's kind of done the dance, right? So maybe that kind of adds to it. And I guess if you're a fighter too, there's that instant respect. Okay, she's been in the wars too. She knows what it's like to cut weight. She knows what it's like to fucking do two a days, to do camp in general. Like, okay, maybe that's the reason. But anyway, regardless, she's really good. This interaction for me is legit one of the most funniest and most awkwardest things I've ever seen in my life. And again, shout out the homeless cats and the fire and the kid for clipping this up, right? So they're sitting down after having a little power outside, which is one of the weirdest things about food truck diaries. The whole premise I thought about food truck diaries that makes it interesting is the fact that there's a food truck there that you're taking all these UFC fighters and you're kind of, you know, who go on crazy weight cuts, who go on crazy camps so they can't eat certain things, crazy diets and stuff. And then to kind of treat them off the back of a win or whatever it may be, here's a food truck. And the whole idea about a food truck is that you eat it standing up. We eat it, maybe you're sitting on some plastic chairs, like kind of like, you know, no reservations or like Anthony Bourdain style where he goes and travels to different places. So I always thought it was strange where you do a food truck and then you go back to a studio to go sit down and eat. But anyway, it doesn't matter. They go into the studio, they're sitting down, and this is just them sitting down, getting ready to eat and stuff and continue the conversation. Maybe you think there's a different part of the interview where they're going to continue, you know, maybe deep diving deep into some more things. And for some reason... It's turned into this really awkward exchange. Even though they've had a really, they've had, they've had what you describe as like icebreaker outside, in outside the food truck. For some reason, it starts to get awkward when they sit down in the studio. I don't know if it's because they weren't with any people. It wasn't many people in the studio. It was just them alone. But something happened. The energy changed from how they were outside and how they got inside. Because outside it seemed quite fun. Then it gets inside. It was really awkward and kind of tense. I don't. Know. It's just hard to describe. But let's just watch it and you can see what I mean. It's high bar. I don't know if you know this about me, but I actually sold beef for a while. So oh, you used to sell beef? So yeah, I would sell it. Like cow, like full cows. Uh, that mine's upside down, but um, hmm. yeah. I'd, I'd probably blame that on the handlers. I wouldn't sell like the entire side of beef. I actually like would uh, process it up and. Oh damn! Yeah. Was that a good gig? I feel like it'd be a good gig in Kansas City. Not really. There's There's no money in food. It was a, it was a passion, a oh, hobby. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What well, I said doesn't matter anyway. It's just good to you. It doesn't matter. It's a passion yeah. project. I also, I here's the thing about cat. I'm, you know, I'm, I do eat beef. It's one of my favorite food. I'm carnivore diet usually. Again, uninvited, <sighs> without provocation, without invitation, without being prodded. Hey, here's me, carnivore guy. We don't need to know. We don't give a fuck. So I eat a ton of red meat. But yeah. cows are fucking cute. They are. God, they're they cute. Are. It's really hard, especially like when we have bottle calves that either lose their mom or the mom doesn't accept. Okay, so this is where it starts to get awkward, right? She's talking about something. 
like an interesting sort of tidbit about her, right? Because again, this is the, f- this is Food Truck Diaries, but it's also a show about Laura, this Laura, Laura Sanko, right? So she's going on there to promote herself. So clearly this little tidbit that she's offering up is opportunity to maybe dive deeper into another aspect of her life that maybe people don't know about, right? Oh, I used to sell meat. I used to work in the butchers. I used to work on a farm. Da, da, da. You could talk about factory farming. You could talk about the effects of an, an environment. Talk about the craziest things you've seen. Did you chop a finger off? Whatever. Just get into some interesting stuff that can maybe delve deep and kind of uncover stuff that people have maybe not heard about her outside of maybe her fighting and her being good at interviews. But then it turns this weird thing where he's kind of staring at her in a way that he might think that she's the burger. And I guess women have this thing where they have an internal kind of um, sense of when somebody's giving them the, I want I want you to sit on my face look <laughs> or something. Because <laughs> she then says something that usually is a sign that the woman kind of like is not really sure what your intentions are. She's just trying to, you know, make sure that you know what time it is, putting the hand out, like, relax. Because it gets really weird here. Like, it gets really weird. He's staring at her, like, hard. Like, hey, if you sit in my face right now, I'll put this burger down. Do you know what I mean? Let's continue. And then you, like, form a relationship. It's easier when it's just, like, a herd and I'm moving them and they just, we just call them by their number. Yeah. And we don't generally eat the ones that we have at our place. But every once in a while. Sometimes my husband's like... vicious. You see? You see what she said there? Look. Look at that. St- how long was that? That was like, what? How long was that? That was like maybe five seconds. He didn't break eye contact, right? <laughs> the whole time. Look, 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 look. <laughs> he didn't break eye contact. Look. Look, look. I'm going to take this off of, I'm going to take this off. Hold on. I'm going to take this off of Zoom, off of, off of thing. Oh, so, you, uh, so you guys can see this properly. Because he didn't break eye contact the whole time. He didn't break eye contact. And I'm going to prove to you here. I'm going to zoom into it because you can see it. So we watch it on the Reddit, right? Let's see. I'll show you. Look. Look, let's what this is so we so we can zoom into it properly, right? Look, look, there they are, right? There's Big B. Look at her. We're gonna play it. She's gonna be talking, right? And you're not gonna see him move at all. Easier when it's just like a herd, and I'm moving him, and they just we just call them by their number. Yeah. And we don't generally hasn't looked away that we have hasn't looked away hasn't looked away hasn't looked away. See, and then she says husband. <laughs> let's rewind this so i can see what she looked like when he was looking at that that long let me see what she looked like because oh my god man where is it here right let's go back to about here i want to see what laura looked like when she was talking because i think her eye, yeah, i knew it straight away her eyes definitely darted around a bit more look at where her eyes are look where her eyes are already just starting the conversation she's looking down Let's see her, where she where she goes until she says my husband. Former relationship. It's easier when it's just like a herd and I'm moving them and they just we just call them by their number. Yeah. And Eyes we moved. We don't generally eat the ones that we have at our place. But Eyes moved. Sometimes my husband's vicious. Like, there we go again. See, she was not holding eye contact as much as he was at all. He is. He definitely thought she was one of those burgers, mate. He definitely thought, you know what? I'm gonna put one down. I'm gonna put one of these beef burgers down, and I'm gonna. Yeah, it's too early to say that, but you know what I mean. Jesus Christ, <laughs> this guy. Is... <laughs> Surely, again, I love Laura Sanko, right? Pretty lady, warm lady, cool lady. But surely living in LA, you must see many women that look like that that live in LA. So why would you be that thirsty when you're doing an interview? Because someone tell me, why would you be that hungry doing an interview? Surely there are plenty of women that look like look, that look like Laura Sanko that have that blonde middle America kind of cutesy face. That could be a teacher. That could have been a whatever. What, I don't know. Whatever. There must be some of them. Why is he so stunned? She might be more stunning in real life. Maybe that's probably why he's so stunned. I don't really know. But the fact that she says my husband in this interview, I feel like to me is a good indication that he was maybe staring too hard. And, and, we, and again, for men, if someone says this to you, my husband or my boyfriend, especially in interaction, when you're trying to hit or something, you just sign that they're kind of getting creeped out. Not from experience, because, you know, I don't creep people out. But I'm just saying. And we don't generally eat the ones that we have at our place. But every once in a while, 
sometimes. My husband's like, vicious with it too. Is he? He's but like, did he grow up in that culture? Yeah. And look, him trying to be, pretend like he's cool with it. Did you grow up in the culture? You don't care about the husband. If she pulled her knickers down right now, you'd be in it, mate. You'd be in it. Come on, you don't get, get, care about a fucking husband. Yeah, it's something you gotta grow up. Like, you sure. know what you're eating. Right? Look, 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 see? Now she mentioned husband. Look at that. He turned away. That was a, that, that, that was an international sign of like, okay, husband talk. Fuck that. I'm back in the burger now. You know what I mean, he, he, this is like the, this is, you know what this is like? This is like the equivalent of the alleged story with like fucking, um, uh, Kalila and Brendan. He tried to holler, tried to get her to come around the house or jump in his truck during New Year's Eve or Christmas or whenever it was. She said no. He's like, okay, cool. Back home to my family then. <laughs> you know? That's the reason. She's Kalila. This is the family. <laughs> hey, interested? Let's talk eye contact, husband talk. Okay, I'm out. Burger. <laughs> Let's get to it. Is he? He's but did like, he grow up in that culture? Yeah. Yeah, it's something you got to grow up. Like, you sure. know what you're eating right now. Uh, that's Betsy. Yeah. That night, Betsy yeah. slept in the bed next to us. Right. We nursed her back to health. Right. I shot Betsy in the face. It, Savage. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, hey, man. Yeah, she's not impressed. I, I, I generally think, especially in a small industry like UFC, especially in a small industry like LA. It is quite advantageous to have female friends that you don't want to fuck. Or even if you do want to fuck them, you just try and keep your fucking first levels undercover, under wraps. You don't need to... I don't believe... I know some people say it's different, but I don't believe you have to be flirty to have a good conversation with a fem- with somebody that's opposite sex. You don't need to have that. You can still have a very cordial kind of... Um, sort of interview that maybe relies on both of your expertise and maybe just your overall chemistry as people but it doesn't always have to be like oh shit i'd fuck you do you know what i mean it doesn't need to be that kind of energy it that really doesn't it's not needed to be honest i don't think so especially again working in small industries you should be able to kind of be able to put that thing to the side so everyone feels comfortable and shit but i don't know some people just some people are just always on you know what i mean they're just always fucking eh, attention <laughs> so i guess it is different <laughs> Oh, but big up Laura Sanko, man. She fucking held it down, man. Big up, big girl. I don't know how she did it, but she did. She held it fucking down.